All right, crazy rare opportunity. I've got my good friend, Jeb Lund, who is the hottest sales author of this decade with me. I don't know if I can say he's with me. I'm in San Francisco airport, uh, heading off to Portland for a workshop. And Jeb, where are you right now? I'm, I'm in the sales gravity studios. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in a rare place where I'm actually not on an airplane or in an airport. So I don't know. I feel I, like I, part of me feels bad for you today because I, I'm not having to travel the way you travel. And you've been on the road for, I don't know, every day this year. Is there, ever, is there a moment when you're not traveling? I'm not, I'm not going to catch you in my hotel nights. Otherwise, I would have some family issues. So anyway, dude, thank you. I don't know. You seem, to be, you seem to be like running me for my money this year. I mean, I, I, like every time I turn around, you're someplace. I'm trying. Okay. I'm just going to be really, really forward here and transparent. I couldn't be more excited about your book. And it's funny flying out here. Uh, I was telling my wife about the sequence of your books and the timing. And I don't know if you were intentional. I'm curious to ask you about that with objections uh, coming out right now. This seems like the perfect, and I know you've got nine books, but in, since I've really known you, it's been the trilogy. You wrote, you wrote the Harry Potter book, Fanatical Prospecting, which we all needed for a million reasons. And thank you for letting me write the forward there. It's been helpful to me and I love pointing people to that book. And then you followed up with sales EQ. So we got the meeting by prospecting. We had all this EQ to establish relationship, credibility, likability, um, better probing, all the things you, you, that sales EQ is so masterful. And then near the end of the sales process, we're getting sales process, we're getting objections. So I don't know, was this intentional as you sequence these books or was it just good fortune of timing? It's some of it's good fortune of timing. Some of it is it's just paying attention to what's going on around me. So we go back to fanatical prospecting. One of the reasons I wrote fanatical prospecting was because of you, because I would hang out with you on the telephone, and by the time I got off the phone with you, I'd be so pissed off because we'd be talking about you know all the charlatans and the people that are telling people what not to do. That you know that I, I, that book had been in my back pocket for a long time, but it was the catalyst of spending so much time with you in particular that drove me to say, you know what, I've had enough. I'm just going to write what I really feel and explain to people. You got to feel the top of the funnel. Then sales EQ was much more nuanced. So I knew that fanatical processing was like you know it was a hammer. I mean, we I just came in and told people the truth. But then you know, and you talk about this because. Once you get in with somebody and you're having a conversation, we move from prospecting, asking for time, to, to the nuance of asking for commitment as we go through the process of selling. And, and, and then it was last summer, I was, at the, I was at the New York Mets, one of my clients, and they did this thing where they just all brought them into an, uh, this auditorium, and I had to spend three hours with the sales team just answering any question they threw at me, just no, no prep, no anything. And when I got done, they let me go watch a baseball game. And I was, I was sitting there. I just couldn't get out of my mind all the questions they were asking me. And it, a, a pattern began to emerge. And the pattern was they kept asking me about what to say when people told them no. And then as I started dialing back and thinking about all the questions that salespeople ask me, and I know it's no different for you, what I basically ran into is there's a common pattern of salespeople asking me what to say when people tell them no. So I, I literally left the ball game that night. The next morning, I called my publisher, and, and I've got enough cred with my publisher because I've written so many books, and I said, we're changing the direction on this thing. I'm writing a book on objections. So as you say, some of it was timing, but I think some of it's just paying attention to what are people struggling with in the marketplace that, you know, that we can solve in some particular way. And so Objections was born. And the moment I started working on this project, I got excited about it. I mean, it's just been my, I've lived it for the last few months. And, and, I, and, it's, and it's thinking about Objections different than any book that's ever been written before. It's trying to write something for the modern seller that really connects with what they are actually experiencing as they work with prospects and, and customers. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, it's so funny. I mean, I, I think this might be your best written book. And what's, what's interesting, I didn't know you were writing it. In fact, until it was about done, I didn't, you kind of kept it under wraps. So it was fun to kind of get a preview copy. You had me at hello in telling the story about the Mets in the introduction and your crazy response where you knew this is the book uh, that you had to write based on what was going on in the world. Just give, give, give our, our audience here just a, a little teaser. I mean, everybody gets objections. It's, it's part of life. Um, what, give, give a little bit of coaching here in terms of what, what the reader is going to come away with because we all get objections at all stages of the sales cycle and it's how we respond and how we're prepared. Just give, give one or two tidbits here just to let, let audience know what they're going to come away with. 
so if you if you if you were to go and take a look at books that are on objections, um, there's books out there that will promise to tell you exactly the words you should say. Some you've got some magic pill words you can say. There's object there's objection books that give you the 25 most common objections and exactly what to say. This is not that book. This is not a book that's full of scripts and what to say. There's no way possible. Every sales job's different. I, the book would have to be the you know the size of the Bible in order to you know to to write that. So instead, we looked at objections from a different standpoint. Why, why do you get objections? So what happens? What creates resistance in the first place? And what's happening inside of you emotionally when you get the objection? And then we took a look at where objections happen in the sales process. And, and, and as you break it down, there's really only four places that you get objections. You get objections when you ask people for time, so prospecting. Those are typically the harshest objections. You get objections early in the sales call that are really more red herrings than objections. There are things that, that people throw out early in the call and then salespeople chase them. So your sales call ends up being a train wreck because the person says, well, I just want the best price. And so you end up negotiating rather than moving into the sales process. So how do you deal with the emotional draw that pulls you into the, to a red herring? You get objections when you're asking for micro commitments and next steps. So I'm asking you for the next meeting to tour your facility, to do the demo, to, to level up to a, a decision maker. And of course, you get objections when you're asking people to make the ultimate commitment and buy from you. So we walk through those four types of objections. And instead of giving you scripts, we give you frameworks. And what a framework is, is like a set of rails that you can run on. So it's a, a process that you run on that, that basically ties into human influence frameworks, the way people act and respond. And the human mind, the human brain is completely predictable. So we run those frameworks. And what a framework does is it gives you these rails that you can run on, a set of steps that you can go through to, to deal with the objection, but it allows you to deal with the objection in context where you are, the type of prospect you're dealing with, the type of things that you're selling. And, and, it, and it all starts, by the way, with what are you doing in the first place that reduces resistance? I mean, the best objection is the one that you never get because you did all the right stuff. So we have to go back to the fact that there's not like this magic point in time. There's not a magic pill. There's not something you can say. There's no fairy dust. There are no unicorns and there are no leprechauns that are going to give you something that's going to automatically solve every rejection in the world or, or objection in the world. But what really has to happen is you have to manage the process. You have to ask great questions. You have to do all the right things. And then, and then you deal with objections. And Mike, I'm going to give you one example of, of uh, just one technique we use in the book that we used two weeks ago with a team of salespeople. We had 17 salespeople in the room. And they were, they were doing okay. So we'll just call them average. And we spent about an hour with them teaching them the first lesson in the book, how to ask for stuff. Basic, right? Just how to ask. And we did this, and then we, went on, we got them back on the telephone. And we didn't change anything except for how they asked. This group of salespeople had a 600% improvement in their productivity. Now, I'm not talking about productivity in terms of setting appointments. These people were selling over the phone. So they had a 600% increase in an hour learning how to ask by simply changing one thing, a 600% increase in their sales. And by the way, when we extrapolated that out across the entire 200-person inside sales team, if that 17 people, those 17 people, did that every hour of every day, they would be able to sell the entire number for the entire 200 person sell team. That's how impactful that was. All you had to do is learn how to ask first lesson in the book. Unbelievable. All right. I'm not even going to ask anything else. I, uh, I, I heard you, I heard you tease out some of this content at our outbound conference uh, where you got into talking about the, how, what's the part of the brain you call her the Amy that. Oh yeah. The amygdala, right? Amygdala. So that's, that's the, the, the Right, the sensory hub of your brain, right? So, you know, why are objections so hard for people? And that's because you have a brain and your brain is naturally sensitive to rejection because rejection is a threat. When you get rejected, there's a chance that you can get kicked out of, out of your group or society. So human beings are naturally sensitive to rejection. And Amy, or the amygdala, the sensory hub of the brain, is always looking for things that could be a threat. So when you get an objection, Amy kicks on and does a whole lot of crazy stuff that happens inside of your body, a neurophysical response, which creates that nasty feeling that you have. So part of objections is teaching you how to manage those disruptive emotions, and part of the framework process is giving you a set of frames that you can run on so that when these things are happening inside of you that you have no control over. So the way that you feel when you get an objection, that emotion happens without your consent. That's going to happen anyway. 
what, what we do is we teach you how to rise above the emotion and get control. And that's what a framework does for you. And, 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 and I love Amy, you know, Amy's just awesome. She's, she's driving me all the time. Oh, you were cracking us up. That was, that was one of the most fun sessions I sat there. All right, Jeb, the book is just about to be released. It's on Amazon right now. Yes. Any details people need to know? Uh, go to Amazon and pick it up. You can, uh, you can download it right now on Kindle. Uh, and the, uh, the, the, the book itself, um, it's one of those books that I can tell you that, like you said, it's, I think it's truly the best book I've ever written. I, I just, the quality of the writing, it's one of those things where after nine books, you start, things start to come together for you. And that's not to say I haven't written a good book in the past, but I just think this is better. But I'm so excited about this book. I'm, it's a book that, this, I know this sounds weird, I like reading the book. I just enjoy it, and it's just it's just serendipity. Just a lot of things came together. I think fanatical prospecting and sales EQ before it. So go pick up the book. The folks that are looking for the audio book, that'll be out in July. So we've got a little bit more time on the audio book. Um, but if you get the audio book and you get the hardcover now, you got something to take notes on. Yeah, awesome. I'm, I want to yeah. thank you for writing it. I'm excited. This book really did. It's different than your other books. I I, I do think it's written in a different almost. Uh, story type level and it just sucked me in from the introduction on and I think it's because this is one of those universal topics there are people that don't want to know about prospecting you know and maybe they thought sales EQ is something you know bigger than them everybody's got objections we all face them so this is going to bring huge value to people that read it go grab a copy of objections Jeb thanks for visiting with me while I'm running through an airport appreciate it brother thanks Mike appreciate it see ya <laughs>